and we are gone. Okay, so today we will uh, start with our chapter one. And uh, as I mentioned just now, all uh, your my notes is inside the future. And then then put it at situ juga lah. All right. So you can just uh, take everything from there. All right. So we will try to do as much as we can on chapter one. And then we move on to two and three as we, uh, and we move on uh, throughout the semester. And for the link, class link for Google link for this class is the same link throughout the semester. Okay. So you, uh, we just use the same link. Uh, throughout the semester. All right. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, are there any specific book that we need to buy for this class? Specific book? Okay. Uh, let me share it to you. Okay. Can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Hold on, hold on. Let me see whether the book, okay, the book is not here. Uh, Well, uh, you can buy the book uh, because it's a very, very old book. Uh, I mean, it's not old book, but uh, it has a new edition. So the book that which I am going to use, if you want to buy, is... There we go. Where is it? This one here. This one here. I put this is all in, also in my uh, new future. You can get, get the book. I mean, you can uh, get this. But uh, yeah, this book you can uh, you can just Google this book and see if there is a PDF version of this book available online. Okay, you can use that as well, or you can buy the book. No problem, because the notes in this uh, course comes from this book as well. Okay, so I'm going to use this first one really. Okay, and uh, because I take some of the questions, some of the uh, what is it uh, exercise all from these textbooks. Okay, this one, number one year, and sometimes I use number two, okay? But mostly, um, mostly uh, the notes from, uh, the notes from this PowerPoint slide come from number one over here, okay? And uh, this uh, file, uh, cost practical approach of operating system is, is inside my new future. So you can just have an access, you can have a look on how to, uh, yeah, what is the name of the file? Okay, so I just, uh, since we have already opened this, let me just uh, re-explain to you. Cost assessment, 50%, meaning to say before your final exam, you should already have close to 50%. And your final assessment is 50%. Okay, uh, we're going to have a few quiz, uh, assignments, lab exercise, quiz, quiz, and two tests. Okay, two tests here. Okay, uh, however, sometimes this test will be changing according to situation. Uh, last semester, we only had one particular test, tapi the percentage was high. The percentage was 20%. So this semester, I think they're going back to the regu uh, regular schedule. They're going to have two tests and the percentage is 10%, 10%. Okay? And then we'll have assignment, assignment, uh, and lab exercise. Sometimes when I'm not able to do uh, lab exercise, I will replace this lab exercise with a quiz. Okay? And I'll still call it like exercise, but it's actually a quiz because since we have three chapters, three or four chapters, so I would prefer uh, each chapter to have a quiz by itself. Uh, if you go through the scheme of work, you will see we have four chapters. However, uh, chapter three and chapter four is actually into one. Uh, it's actually into one. Only, uh, I think last semester, they've broken up into two chapters. Chapter four. Uh, the end of chapter 3 dah jadi chapter 4. Tapi sebenarnya uh, 3 itu sama je. 3 and 4 tu is actually 3. Okay. So if you see my notes, you will see 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. Uh, bila masuk 3.4 tu, that means it's already chapter 4. Okay. Alright. Are you all okay? Any more questions you want to ask me before we start our class for today? No. Are you okay? All right. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So chapter 1.1. So 1.1 will be explaining to you about what is an operating system. Okay. Uh, what is an operating system? So we are going to understand, we're going to learn in throughout of this uh, course, 
what is an operating system. Okay, and at the end of this course, you should be able to differentiate what is operating system and what is application system or application software. Okay, that is the most important uh, outcome that you should know uh, by the end of this course or by the end of this chapter. What is the main difference of an operating system and application software or application system? Okay, so we have a few types of operating system. There are many, many versions and many, many types, but the most famous one I think all of you would know is Windows. Okay, so on your screen now, you can see a few types of operating system that is available in the market. So you have Red Hat, you have uh, Ubuntu, you have OXX, uh, you have Windows, which is your favorite, you have Linux, okay, you have Oracle, you have IBM, okay. Uh, Oracle is also a database uh, system, but is also a operating system by itself. And you also have on your phone, you have your iOS, that is also part, that is also considered a operating system. And you have Android that's also considered your operating system. So operating system is actually what or, or a system that manages the hardware inside your PC. Okay, it's actually a system or it's actually a software which manages the whole personal computer. Okay, it's a system behind it. Okay, however, an application software is an application software only meaning to say it only does a few things microsoft word only allows you to type or do some editing microsoft excel only allows you to do this however you cannot run your application software without an operating system okay so you need the operating system to run the uh, computer itself Okay, so an operating system performs basic tasks, recognizing input from keyboard or mouse, sending output to the monitor. So this is the basic task of an operating system. So operating system will do this. That means if you attach your PC with a HDMI cable, so the operating system will send input or output from the computer to the screen using a HDMI cable using a VGA cable, okay? And it will also receive input from outside and will process the input. Let's say you connect your PC with a scanner. So it will receive an input from the scanner inside to the PC and it will begin to process, okay? So that is what an operating system can do. And an operating system can also keep track of all the files within your disk. So when I say this, it means your hard disk and it also means your uh, memory, okay? So inside your operating system, there is a RAM. So inside your RAM, RAM is random access memory, which the contents will disappear once you off the PC. So inside your RAM, there's also certain files. So this operating system will keep track of all those files, and all those systems, which is running inside your computer, okay? And you will also control uh, devices such as your disk drive. This drive is your hard disk, your printer, your monitor, your keyboard, your sound system. So operating system will control all of this. Okay. So you need to have an operating system running inside your computer. Okay. At all times. So if you do not have your operating system running, then you do not have, you cannot use your application software application system okay so it's the most important program that runs on the computer interface between a computer and a user so with the interface the operating system allows user that like you and me to use the computer so it's something in between in order for you let's take the phone for example in order for you to make a phone call or type messages, you need something to do it on. So you have your WhatsApp, you have your keypad on your phone. So you type in the numbers, you press call, you are able to do it. 
if you do not have anything in between, then you cannot use your phone. A phone is a phone. You cannot do anything because you do not have an interface. So you need to have an interface that allows you, that allows the user to use the computer. So in this case, the operating system acts as an interface between a user and the computer. And it's also responsible for the management and coordination activities and the sharing of resources. So what are those resources? What do you mean? What do I mean by resources? Resources means files. Resources means the drive. Resources means RAM. For example, let's say inside your uh, hard disk, there are certain types of files. Let's say you have the PDF file, you have the Excel file, you have the PowerPoint file, Word document file. So when you double click on this particular file, the operating system will coordinate how to open this file, where is it stored, how is it stored, where, in what location is it stored, and who, which program he wants to access this particular file. Okay, let's say you double click on a PDF file. So the operating system will make sure that is a PDF file, that file is not corrupted, and which program can use this PDF file. Okay, you do not open a PDF file and suddenly Microsoft Word opens. No. So the operating system will coordinate this. All right. So this is a diagram on how users can access the hardware of, of a personal computer. So users are at the top, they have an application which is connected to the operating system and which is connected directly to the hardware. Because inside the hardware or inside your disk drive is where is the particular, uh, sorry, is the location of all the files. So the user needs to have an application as an interface and an operating system to actually use that particular uh, system or that particular file. So if you look at this diagram over here, so the application is connected to the operating system. So this application, let's say it can be, uh, let's say is the PowerPoint, PPT, right? So you double click on the PowerPoint. So the files are sent inside the operating system and the operating system will locate where is this file? Okay, this file is inside here. So it will grab the file from here and send it back here and the operating system will determine that this particular file of interest is a PowerPoint. Next, what do I do? The operating system needs to push this file inside the monitor so that it is displayed to the monitor. Next, the user will type in some doc, some info to that particular PowerPoint file and use the mouse like I am using now. And the operating system will keep track of all this. And if there is a safe mode or if the user needs to save that particular PowerPoint, the operating system will allow this and resave it back inside the hard disk over here. Next, if the user wants to print, now the operating system will go and check if the printer is working, if it's fine, is there anything else printing, is it out of paper, no, okay, then only the user, the operating system will allow the user to print on that particular printer. So the operating system, you can say, is the, actually the brain of the computer system. It coordinates who does what. Okay, who does what. It coordinates what is happening now. It coordinates, okay, who does what, what is happening now, where can you get this information. Okay, kalau dalam class, you can say this is the ketua darjah lah dalam class. If anything happens, okay, let's say you want to do a program. Uh, let's say you want to do a competition. Let's say you want to do a special uh, event. So who coordinates? Okay, there will be a head there. So the head will coordinate. Okay, uh, this group of students, what need? This group of students, what need? Okay, same in that aspect. The operating system will coordinate what actually happens inside the uh, personal computer. Okay, a little bit history of the computer system. We started in about 19 or uh, below 1950s. We had the first generation, second generation third, fourth, and now we are in the fifth generation over here, okay? So these were the examples, or so these were how the generation or the computer system used to look like uh, during the early years, and it has 
it has now uh, come to a stage whereby it's over here it's in the fifth or sixth generation when i first started using the pc i was inside the third generation okay so you can assume how old i am okay so this is how the first generation uh, computer system was we started way back in 1945 uh, we used vacuum tubes and plug boards vacuum tubes are like your old tvs eh? kalau you perasan dulu old tvs it's not flat belakang tu ada tube semicircle so those are what we say as the uh, tubes vacuum tubes okay so this was how computer system was during the those days but those computer system did not have any operating system so there was a specific mechanism that needed to be completed so that uh, the system could uh, actually work and then we moved on to the second generation in 1955 whereby we used transistors the punch card so how does the punch card look like this is an example of a punch card system it the punch card system was only to do data processing is only to use for a uh, user to actually use it for uh, process data so what do i mean by processing data processing data is whereby uh, let's say for example uh, you have uh, you have a few, few types of data let's say the let's say you're working in a telco company so you have so many data you have the data uh, people uh, orang buat phone calls people receive phone calls how many calls do you do in a month how many calls do you do in a year in a week so these are your data so you want to process the data to find out what is the frequency of people using their phones what is the frequency people using their uh, phones every month every week so this you want to process the data so uh, in 1950s onwards there was a technique called the punch card system whereby the user will use a special typewriter to punch in number uh, to punch in holes here okay to punch in specific holes here okay so each hole will represent a value okay will represent a value and this uh, these punch cards will be put in a special machine and the machine will actually count the number of holes available or not available and based on that a specific result will come out okay a specific result will come out yes i know it's very difficult to understand but this is how uh, these things were done way back in 1950s to 1970s and then we moved on to 1965 yes we still use the punch card system uh, but uh, the PCs were more advanced. Uh, it only run during time sharing or the spooling. Time sharing is whereby a system, a computer system, which, which runs only at a specific time for each application. Meaning, kalau you bring that example to sekarang, meaning uh, you cannot run, let's say you are running your, your, you are doing your PowerPoint, you are listening to music, you are doing your Excel all at the same time. But in 1965, you could not do this. That means if you're doing Microsoft Word, only that you can use. If you're doing, if you're listening to YouTube, only that you cannot switch and change. Okay. And each application will run in a specific time only. And during this time, a lot more operating systems were developed, as you can see down here. And then we moved on to nine, the fourth generation, whereby you have a PC, a nice PC. Uh, this is where I came in uh, during my time. Uh, we used to have Windows 95. I remember those days when we started using, or when I started using the personal computer in 95. Uh, even to double click, I had a problem. What is double click? How do I click the mouse so that it makes a double click? Okay, so these were some of the issues. And as times go on, fourth, fifth generation, uh, the personal computers became way way much cheaper and now uh, yes they are very very cheap already uh, as compared to those days you can get something which is called the uh, you, you can get something which is about within 2000 and so on and so forth okay uh, let's just stop here for a while i want to ask you a question have you all heard about chromebook chromebook 
Corona. What 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 is the difference between a Chromebook and a uh, laptop, yes sir? Ahmad Zahidi. Limited function function. Limited function. Okay, that's the very easiest answer. Pernah dengar tak uh, Azlin? Nur Azlin binti Nawawi. Have you heard about a Chromebook? Ah, uh, tak pernah dengar. Tak pernah dengar. Okay. Uh, how about Nurul Nabila? Have you heard about Chromebook? Um, pernah. Tapi saya tak tahu lah dia punya function dia. Okay. Alright. Let me explain to you. Chromebook and laptop biasa. What's the difference? Okay. Normal laptop is a normal laptop lah yang you have. Fine. But a Chromebook runs on Chrome. It's like, how do you say? You just bayangkan lah your handphone ni, your handphone. A bigger version of your handphone now is is a bigger version of your handphone, and each time you want to install anything, you have to go through Google Play Store. That is a Chromebook. Okay, a Chromebook cannot install Microsoft Word. It needs to install whatever. It can only install whatever is available in Play Store. Okay, so it only runs on Android. It runs on memory. It runs on Android. Uh, it's mostly used for for applications that are easy to it is on the go. For example, you can't use it for apa namanya? You can't use it for processing sangat. Yeah, you can use it for processing kalau you nak Excel. Tapi dia tak ada Excel. Dia tak ada PowerPoint. You can install whatever is available dalam Google Play Store. Okay, macam itu. It's as if like a phone tapi a bigger version. That is a Chromebook. Okay, and a Chromebook you cannot do programming ke apa. It, it does not fit well. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, you can get Chromebooks below for below 2000. Normally, people who use Chromebooks uh, don't use it for serious use. They only use it like to read, uh, using it to read PDF. Uh, you want to surf the net, you want to watch YouTube, you know, leisure use, then it's fine. Uh, but if you're wanting to do a more uh, extensive thing, you want to use, you want to use it for your class for processing. And then you have to buy a laptop. Okay, so now you know at least what the Chromebook because ini soalan soalan popular yang orang akan tanya kalau kalau you buat computer science lah. That's always the key. Anyway, we we'll continue with our lecture. All right. So now we have come to a cheaper PC. Next, we move on to types of operating system. So we have types a few types of operating system. Uh, yes, uh, each operating system allows you to have single users and you have a good GUI. I hope you know what's a GUI, graphical user interface. So graphical user interface means everything is in graphic form. Okay, graphic form. That means if you want to, if you want to copy something, you just right click, copy, you can see the menu. If you want to, uh, let's say you want to open your file you just click you locate the file double click open because everything you can see all right so these are examples of uh, personal computers which uses operating system you have microsoft windows xp vista all this lah. Okay, these are some examples so i'm sure you can uh, name all this all right so next we also have something which is called the batch operating system Whereby this batch operating system is like a normal operating system. However, it only executes its process in a batch system, in a batch processing mode. For example, you each processing or each transaction in a batch operating system is put inside a transaction. And then it's collected inside a transaction and put in the file and it's run at a scheduled time period. So what is an example of a batch operating system? A batch operating system can be Microsoft pun boleh. Cuma what makes it a batch ialah the process yang you buat pun. Uh, the process that you do in a computer system makes the PC a batch operating system so automatically at a certain scheduled time the process will take place example 
uh, this batch processing is done in uh, telco companies. But telco companies, they can mula process your bill at a certain given date. Let's say you make a call on day one, day two, day three, sampai day twenty. On day twenty-five, baru you terima bill about all your calls for the last twenty days. Okay, you do not receive the bill the next day. Hari ini buat call, esok dapat tak? You buat call hari ini, esok lusa. Only on the last day or the twentieth day or whatever, only then you receive it. So each time you make a call, it's called each transaction. Transaction, 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 transaction. And they can process at a certain given period of time only. Okay, certain given period. Baru dia keluarkan bill, baru dia generate kan uh, how much have you used, berapa minit and so on, and how much you can buy. Sama juga dengan electricity bill. It's considered to be a batch operating system whereby you get the bill at the end of the month. Bukannya tiap-tiap hari orang-orang TNB datang, oh hari ni bill you banyak ni, ha, ni bill dia. Uh, esok bill you banyak ni, ha, ni bill you. Tak. You, they, they allow you to do it on a day-to-day -day basis at the end of the month, baru dia orang tambah. Okay, next we also have time sharing whereby each user of the system is given a certain period of time. Meaning, one computer is shared by multiple users. That means one person can use the PC for a certain period of time. Habis masa, dia kena bagi orang lain. Habis masa, dia kena bagi orang lain. That is a time sharing system. We don't use this much these days. Next, we have the interactive operating system. Allows users to directly with the operating system uh, based on certain commands. Okay, this is more interactive. This is how we say like the touchscreen PCs. There is more interactive. You touch, things will happen. Or you go to shopping malls. Uh, contohnya macam ATM system. That is an interactive operating system because you touch on the screen. Selagi tak ada interaction between the user and the ATM system, the system will not start. So an interactive system is like a normal operating system. Yes, Windows. Tetapi it needs the user to initiate then the system will start to uh, start to uh, whether will, will start to respond interactively. Okay. Uh, next, you have also the real time operating system. Okay, a real time operating system is normally used in manufacturing, in apa namanya, in uh, medical. Kalau you tengok sini, this is an example of a real time operating system RTOS. Uh, ini mesin untuk check. Tak tahu lah mesin untuk apa. Tapi is in one of the hospitals whereby it does a specific job and the results will come out in real time. Meaning, patient itu masuk dalam uh, equipment ni, automatically tepi tu, result dia akan keluar. That is a real time. Uh, MRI machine. Okay, that is a real time. Okay. And uh, this uh, real time uh, operating system generates the uh, report immediately is real time okay you do not it's not like the batch system where you get the result at the end of the day but this is real time uh, kalau you pergi hospital uh, the the tu? machine to check bp blood pressure machine to check oxygen level it's all real time okay that's also real time it's not like you check uh, 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 you you check your oxygen level you letak apa uh, you letak dia punya device on your finger uh, tunggu dua jam baru keluar result. Tak. It's almost, it's immediately. That is what we say is a real time. Next, we have something which is called the hybrid version. Uh, ini sekarang ni dah ada lah di hospital semua. The hybrid version where you have interaction, interactive and a batch. Okay. Well, this is how it looks like. Interactive meaning doctor boleh tekan-tekan jabatan kat sini and the machine will move, the lighting is changed. And these lightings are all connected to the computer, meaning kalau perlu, automatic kalau gelap, dia akan keluarkan, dia akan keluarkan cahaya. And some is done batch, that means dia akan proses maybe certain equipment or certain sensor kat sini according to masa dia. Okay, so this is what we say is a hybrid version. Dia ada kedua-duanya sekali. Okay, kedua-duanya sekali. A hybrid version can also mean 
inside your your computer eh, sorry inside your handphone is it interactive because you can touch the screen and maybe it's also bad system because certain process will only run at a certain period, given period of time um okay so the so the uh the, the, the operating system on your phone is actually what we say is a embedded operating system a type of operating system that is specifically configured for a certain hardware configured and designed for special purpose so any special purpose here yellow to make calls is only meant for this specific hardware okay embedded operating system there is no way okay you can format your pc boleh tetapi you have to format it back with the same operating system i like the personal computer yes you boleh format tetapi you boleh upgrade according to the hardware lah you cannot upgrade so high tapi you boleh upgrade so that is what we say as the uh, difference between the normal pc and an embedded operating system embedded operating system ini is already embedded dalam your phone mostly is and is specifically only for that particular hardware okay so embedded ni you have it on your phone mostly your people use the example ada dalam telefon your apa smart tv pernah dengar smart tv okay you also have embedded operating system it helps you to run the system uh, your apa set up box Astro punya set up box, okay. Astro punya uh, apa? Uh, set up box, uh, Astro Ultra Light, Ultra Dis, uh, Ultra Light. So these are all embedded operating system. It's already inside there. You cannot configure it for something else. It's already meant to be configured only with a certain type of hardware. You cannot also some uh, embedded operating system does not even allow you to uh, format. So you have to use it until the end of time. Okay. So these are examples of the operating system which are available. Okay, are you all okay today? You have any questions to ask me? I have question about batch operating system. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Zahidi. I can see. Uh, what what is your question about Zahidi? Saya uh, tak. So Berapa faham konsep batch operating system? Alright. Okay. So batch operating system ni sebelum saya explain, let me give you an example. Ah, uh, pernah you pernah tak you post surat? Tak. Okay. Let me explain to you how this process works. Bila you post surat, you akan masukkan surat tu dalam peti surat lah. Post box eh. Box. And then postman akan datang at a certain point. Oh, oh, you pernah post tak dekat JNT? Pernah masuk JNT tak? Or mana-mana syarikat lain? Pernah masuk tak? Uh, tak. Okay. So kalau you post your letters in JNT or anywhere else, the process of collection is only done at a certain point. Betul tak? Kalau you post it at 9 o'clock, surat tu tak akan jalan lagi 9 o'clock. Dia akan jalan hanya pada pukul let's say pukul 5. It only runs at that time. Baru dia akan start proses. Sebelum itu dia kumpul semua surat-surat dekat GNT. Only at 5 o'clock dia proses, 6 o'clock lori jalan. So that <coughs> is an example of batch system. Okay, that is an example of batch system. So dalam batch operating system, what the operating system does is it collects all the information but it does not process it just yet. It will process it at a certain given point of time. Contohnya, you buat programming C++ or Java inside your PC and you cuba compile. Bila you compile in a batch operating system, dia takkan compile at that instance. Dia akan compile at a certain point of time pukul lima sahaja. Kenapa dia buat macam tu? Sebab in a batch system, dia cuma ada limited RAM and the processor is very limited. Tetapi user dia banyak. User dia banyak. Okay? Just imagine 
you have one computer and ada 30 orang tengah share tengah cuba gunakan uh, C++ dalam komputer tersebut so in a batch operating system the process is only done at a certain given point of time schedule dia sama juga macam bil telefon bil electricity it is only processed at the end of the month bukannya hari ni saya pakai electricity berapa dia tak akan TNB tak akan hantar bil hari ni pun saya buka api hari ni pun saya buka kipas tapi pukul 6 nanti orang TNB tak akan datang dia akan datang at the end of the month dia akan bagi satu bil mengatakan bahawa jumlah or the total amount of energy I have used uh, during this month is this much so that is also a batch operating system so a batch operating system ialah an operating system which will process all the information at a certain given of point of time only dia tak akan proses sekarang Okay, dia takkan proses instantly. Meaning, kalau you buat programming, you cuba compile. Compiling is a process, but dia takkan compile sekarang. Dia akan compile pukul 5 sahaja, pukul 6. Maybe, a, I don't know, a later time. Okay, during my time when I started studying, dalam computer lab kami, akan ada beberapa monitor. And each of these monitors are not connected to any CPU. These monitors are directly connected to other server kat depan yang besar. So, bila saya buat programming, saya tu pakai C sahaja and I do C programming, dah buat, 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 buat and then saya tekan compile jawapan compile itu tak akan keluar lagi sehingga petang nanti dia akan keluar dalam bentuk printed form So, pukul 9 saya compile saya keluar pada computer lab pukul petang nanti saya datang akan ambil slip tu, saya tengok, oh, error Dalam 8 jam tu, 7 jam tu, I don't know whether it's an error ke tak. So that's how it's done. Because the system was very very slow, so it has to be done in a batch processing mode. Okay, as compared to now. Now you do programming pukul 9, you tekan pukul 9 satu minit, you dah tahu dah error you kat mana. Error you mungkin only one line or semicolon dia silap. Tetapi during those days, it's done in a batch setting. So a batch uh, operating system ialah a processing which is done at the at a schedule period a uh, time period only. okay i hope you understand do i make sense yes sir okay any other questions zulaika shazwani nazira uh, excuse me sir i have a question yes of rina uh besides communication tools such as laptops computers and phones do other hardware such as uh, radios or uh, walkie-talkies have their own operating system because uh, they perform basic tasks also such as recognizing inputs and sending outputs. Okay, all right, good. That's a very good answer, very, very interesting question. Yes, uh, walkie-talkie, yes, is what we say as a real-time operating system. Yang tadi tu, yang slide lahir tu, real-time operating system. That is a walkie-talkie. What is a real-time operating system? A real-time operating system is an operating system which is already embedded. Apa maksud embedded? Embedded ini is like your RAM. is embedded. Memang dah dimasukkan siap-siap itu. You cannot format it anymore. Kita tak pernah dengar orang format walkie-talkie. Habis, beli lain. Rosak, beli lain. That is embedded. Okay? And it's real-time, meaning Cakap sini, dengar sana. Cakap sana, dengar sini. Real time. Bukan ni cakap hari ni, dengar esok. Tak ada. Okay? That is a real time. Yes, you are correct. Um, uh, radio does not do any operating system. Kalau uh, radio apa you cakap lah? Radio kereta? Uh, like, uh, maybe uh, car radio or okay. car old radio. radio. Ni, okay. Uh, uh, old radio memang tak ada lah. Or radio dia pakai frekuensi sahaja. Or radio memang dia tak ada operating system. Tapi when you talk about car, uh, radio kereta semua, now that is what we say is an embedded system. Dia dah ada Android kat situ dah. Dia ada touch screen interactive. It's an interactive uh, operating system. That's why certain phone, sorry, certain um, cars can connect to your PC. Sorry, can connect PC pula. Can connect to your phone. Google Maps boleh keluar dekat screen tu. Okay, that is what we said as an interactive operating system. Interactive operating system. 
but how about here do you see this this is my aircon remote sepatutnya warna putih tapi anak saya warna kan hijau orange this is what we say as a ini lain this is an aircon remote <coughs> this is not processing it does not do anything this is what we say as a microcontroller remote tv remote aircon remote apa lagi remote astro is what we say as a microcontroller so what is a microcontroller nanti next next class i explain but in basic microcontroller is a device hardware device that only allows you to connect or to control one particular hardware only it does not do any processing dia tak proses apa-apa sekali pun Okay, tekan sini, aircon buka. Tekan sini, aircon tutup. Itu saja. Dia tak ada proses benda lain dah. Okay, dia tak ada. Dia, they, they cannot do anything. This is a microcontroller. Dia control je. If you say a microprocessor, that means dia buat processing. Dia ada RAM dalam tu. Okay, dia ada embedded operating system dalam tu. That is what you say as a microcontroller. That is what a microprocessor. A calculator is not a microprocessor. Okay, it's basically a microcontroller. It can only control calculation je. Ya betul, ada orang cakap, ya dia dia buat processing kan? Bukan. Dia lah benda tu dah embedded kan tu. There is no such thing as you can change. Processing maksud dia, uh, processing di sini maksud dia, it can think logic. Calculator tak boleh fikir logic. Kita masukkan nombor-nombor uh, uh, yang salah, dia keluarkan lah nombor-nombor yang salah pun. Okay, it does not do any processing. Ya yeah, betul dia campur dua nombor campur tiga nombor betul juga tu itu proses lah. Ma, no, it's actually control already. <coughs> you masuk dua tiga empat lima, you tekan ada ah, keluar lah jawapannya. I like PC. PC kalau you masukkan dia akan proses. Kalau salah dia beritahu. So you kena buat balik. Kalau calculator dia, kalau you masukkan uh, calculation yang salah dia tak cakap oh salah. Dia proses juga nombor dia. Dia keluarkan nombor tu. Okay. So that is a major difference between microcontroller and a microprocessor. Alright, any more questions? <coughs> Iza, Fatin, Hadira, Fatini, Aina, Shazwani, Aisha, Safika, Afrina. Okay. Ma, sir. Yes, yes, Fatin, Fatin. Terangka pasal MLOS tu uh, jelas lagi. Saya kurang jelas di sini. Mana tadi? Uh, uh, ulang balik soalan tu? Uh, uh, bahagian embedded OS tu. Embedded OS? Okay. Uh, saya kurang jelas. No problem. Okay, here we are. Embedded OS paling senang. Because the operating system is embedded. Telah tak. Kalau direct translation dapat embedded bermaksud dia dah tertanam kat situ. Okay, it's already inside your hardware and it's only for a specific purpose. The purpose is only to do that. You can only do purpose tu bermaksud it can only do certain limited functions. Okay, so the most easiest one is your uh, handphone. OS is already embedded inside here. It's the OS yang embedded is your Android ke iOS lah. Okay. Yes, it's part of the operating system sebab dia ada memory, dia ada processor, processor dia lah Android. Tetapi the operating system is already embedded. You cannot do anything. You cannot you cannot uh, upgrade it anymore. Itu itu sajalah. Okay. You cannot add your RAM inside here. You cannot do anything. You cannot add additional space. Yes, boleh. Kita boleh tambah kita punya SD card ke apa. Boleh. But you cannot do anything more than that. Okay. So, uh, embedded operating system can only do limited functions. Okay. And limited processing. And the most important thing you need to understand about embedded operating system is it's already inside the particular hardware. Smart TV ada operating system dalam tu. Tetapi you cannot install any other operating system. You tak boleh cakap, okay malam ni abah, saya nak format TV saya. It does not work that way. You cannot do that. Okay, you cannot do that. Handphone saya rasa boleh. Kita boleh format phone. Yes, boleh. But you can only uh, reinstall it with the same operating system. You cannot buy this one, Samsung. 
and dia kata um, I want to install iOS Oh you beli iOS, you kata I nak install Samsung Eh, I nak install Android Oh I nak, I nak install dua-dua, tak boleh It does not work that way Because it's already embedded with the operating system It's already in place, it's already dalam tu dah You cannot do anything, okay? So same thing as your smart TV uh, And other electronic devices which has embedded operating system Microwave bukan embedded operating system eh. Orang tanya saya, microwave macam mana? Microwave kan ada button-button, kita boleh defrost lah Tak ada. Microwave is microcontroller sebab dia dah set kat situ. Temperature, temperature. Uh, panaskan, panaskan. You nak defrost, defrost. That's it. You cannot tell any, does not do any processing. You tak boleh cakap dengan microwave tu. Tekan-tekan uh, button ni, okay. Kalau tak cukup panas, panaskan lagi eh. Tak ada. It does not do that. You masuk ke makanan, inside the microwave, you tekan 3 minit, dia run 3 minit. Habis 3 minit, dia duduk diam. Uh. Dia duduk diam je. Dia tak buat apa dah. Dia ada microcontroller. Dia, dia, tak, dia tak tahu apa nak buat. Dia duduk diam je tu. That is a microprocessor. Calculator pun sama. Dia masukkan jawapan, uh, masukkan input yang salah, dia keluarkan jawapan yang salah. Dia tak boleh cakap, eh salah lah ni. Ini bukan teori ni. Ini lah. Dia tak boleh buat. Okay. Rasa. <coughs> yes. Siapa tu? Kalau oh, uh, slide. Oh, yeah. Kalau macam phone Nokia yang lama-lama tu dia kira microprocessor ke microcontroller? Nokia mana ni? Nokia yang Nokia yang lama yang tekan-tekan. <laughs> Itu micro uh, it's not processor. Sah bukan processor. Senang je kalau dia nak tahu processor, dia boleh proses apa? Macam Nokia uh, 400 saya boleh proses apa? Dia tak boleh proses apa kan? Uh, so it's not a processor. Dia cuma boleh buat call je. Yeah. It's just a micro, it's just a phone lah. You can consider it as a microcontroller. Dia boleh buat tu je. Dia tak boleh proses. Okay, proses maksudnya dia, dia boleh, uh, a process can be very simple. What do you mean by process? Senang je. Kalau you macam phone, phone ini kan, phone Samsung ni. Kan kita ada mic kat sini, microphone ni. Kita boleh cakap dengan phone. Okay, open YouTube. That is a process lah. Kalau suara kita akan ditranslate dalam Android, dia akan translate off. Oh, and then dia, dia akan keluarkan beberapa teks. So that is a process lah dia buat. So phone Nokia yang lama-lama tu namanya telefon je lah. Okay, any more questions? Alright, if you don't have any questions, we'll stop our lecture for today. Uh, short one sahaja sebab ni baru chapter one. I do not want to uh, burden you with so many other uh, points. Uh, we will stop here for now and I will see you back next week. Okay? Alright? Okay. okay, sir. Okay. Thank okay, you so much. Uh, do not forget to sign your attendance dalam new feature. Nota pun dalam new feature juga. Alright? Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.